Church has said, Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you because we know you come to bless us. And we're asking, Lord, that your blessing will reach every life, even here today in Jesus' name. Amen. Every form of fear, timidity, or lacking back in any life. I pray you wash it out in Jesus' name. Amen. Do something today. Amen. Something definite. Amen. Something that sets free. Amen. Something that makes your blessing to multiply in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Genesis chapter 15, I'm reading to you from verse 1. Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Fear not, Abraham. Fear not, child, believer, faithful child of God. I am thy shield. A shield means anything, any attack that comes your way, it will get to the shield, it will not get to you. And the Almighty God said, I am. I've always been and I still am. I am thy shield and your exceeding great reward. He says, whatever you're looking for, whatever reward, whatever answer, whatever, whatever solution, I am that reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? You have to ask. You have to tell the Lord, and you will not depend upon another one to ask for you. What are you going to give me? Verse 5, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. Your answer will come from heaven. Your miracle will come from heaven. Your supply will come from heaven. Your provision will come from heaven. Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. As high as those stars, so shall thy seed be. As near to heaven as those stars, so shall thy seed be as bright and shining as those stars so shall thy seed be as numerous uncountable as those stars are so shall thy seed be as untouchable nobody can shoot an arrow to the stars and get there as untouchable as those stars are so shall thy seed be Somebody said, Amen. Amen. And he believed in the Lord. He's never heard anything like that before. That was the first time the Lord was saying, Look up to heaven and count the stars if you're able to. And as numerous, uncountable, high, unreachable, untouchable, unconquerable, as those stars are, so shall thy seed be. And he believed, believed in the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. The Lord is speaking to us this morning on the subject, fear not, the promise is still good. The promise he gave to Abraham, he has now given to the seed of Abraham. And the Lord is saying today for you, every promise you read in the word of God, as it was then, so it is today. It is still good. It will be good in your life in Jesus' name. 
three things we're looking at before we pray. You'll pray today. And God will answer your prayer today. Amen. We'll stand when we need to pray. If you are tired, you'll see it, but you'll still be praying. And if you are walking about because you want to be it a tiredness away, whatever your posture, whatever you are doing today, you will pray. And today, today, God will answer your prayer. Point number one, the abiding promise of his presence. The abiding promise of his presence. Point number two, the assuring promise of his power. Promise assuring of his power. Point number three, the ascending promise. That means it's going up and up and up. What you got yesterday, God will build on that. What you get today, God will build on that. The ascending promise of his provision. Point number one. The abiding promise of his presence. Abiding promise of his presence. Exodus chapter 33. And I'm reading from verse 14, Exodus 33, verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. He says, you'll never be in a corner, tight corner, where you'll not find me. My presence will go with you. You'll never face a challenge. That you will not have me on hand, my presence will go with you. You never be at a crossroad where I will not be with you, my presence will go with you. There never be a temptation, a trial, trouble that is so high and so great that you will not find my power, my enablement, my support, and my victory, my presence will go with you. You never cross any river. You never climb any mountain where you don't find my power sufficient for you because my presence will go with thee and I will give you rest. You will rest. You will rest. All the challenges, all the commotion, everything that troubles in life, your rest has now come. Isaiah chapter 41. And I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 10. Fear thou not. Is God speaking to somebody there today? What's your fear? Why is your heart beating up and down? What do you remember? That makes almost your mind, your heart to scatter. What's the power of the enemy? And what's the challenge that confronts you? Landlord, threats, fear thou not. I said fear thou not. I remember some years ago, somebody came to see me at the end of one of the sessions after one of my messages. He said, I'm in trouble. I said, what's the trouble? He said, somebody wrote a letter to me with red ink. And then when I read the letter, I lost my mind. And he came to take all my property. When I got home, everything was empty in the house. And so, I've been going from pinna to post. I've been going from here to there, looking for solution. Then I told him, fear thou not. And I'm telling you this morning, fear thou not. That enemy is conquered already in Jesus' name. So I said, God has touched you. But I told him, there is this, this, and this in your life. As the Lord revealed to me, set all that. And then come back in the evening, in the evening session, I'll pray for you. 
And he went away with that understanding, fear thou not. And the things I told him, he didn't argue. He didn't say, but how could you know that? I'm seeing you for the first time. He went back home and in the afternoon settled all those things. He came back in the evening and I said, now we're ready to pray. He said, no, I don't need prayer anymore. I said, what do you mean? He said, when I did what you told me to do, the sanity vanished away. <laughs> now, instead of prayer, I want to give you a testimony. I'm looking at somebody there this morning. You have a testimony. <laughs> Some years ago, why? At Bagada. That's before we left Bagada to IBTC. And now we are back in Bagada. If you have not been to Bagada since we started again, April and May of this year, you're missing something. After this retreat, rush back there. Even if there's no service there, as your feet tread on Bagada. Multiplied miracles in your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> we were at Bagada. And then it was Saturday night. We just finished our workers' uh, meeting that Saturday. And these uh, couple came from the north, all the way from the north. They just got married. And then they discover they couldn't perform. They were just looking at one another. And so the, uh, they said, we have to go to Lagos. We have to get to Bagada. And they came. And then, um, you know, they told me, we've just gotten married. There's frustration. There's confusion. We don't know what to do. We couldn't do anything at all. Everything was totally paralyzed. And I said, well, go find a place to stay tonight. After the service tomorrow, come and see me. Everything will be all right. Did I hear an amen there? Yeah. And they found a place uh, to stay near Bagada there. And lo and behold, then they came to see me after the Sunday service. And I said, tell me your testimony. I didn't even say, okay, we're ready to pray now. I said, tell me your testimony. They looked at me and both of them were smiling. They said, everything was all right last night. <laughs> and I'm telling you today, everything is all right in your life. <laughs> Somebody there, everything is all right in your life. Fear thou not, fire was thee. Be thou not, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He is, he is your God. I will strengthen you. Weakness is gone. Weakness is gone. Any part of your body where there's weakness or sickness, it is gone in Jesus' name. It says, yea, yes. I will help thee. Yea, yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. The presence of God, the Lord has said, He will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And that promise is still good today. The abiding promise of His presence. Point number two, the assuring promise of his power. The assuring promise of his power he has not changed and assures us that he gives us power. He gives you power this morning. Power this morning. What do you have? Witness. What do you have? Fear. What do you have? Now, your time has come to look at Nebuchadnezzar eyeball to eyeball because now there is power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Is that right? 
Aha, if that is right, who then do you fear on earth as you go from today? This promise of abiding power and assuring power will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. Look at this, Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, that's how powerful people talk. Behold, you know, uh, sometimes uh, all through your life, before you were saved, you used to look down. And anybody that comes, because you had a lot of stories from your grandmother. That, you know, there's some people like this, they have this kind of power. Some people like this, they have that kind of power. Some people like that, they have that kind of power. And as you are growing up, anybody you saw, you matched them with the stories of grandma. And with the stories of grandpa. And with the stories you heard from other people. And they say, this is how they act. This is how they look. If they act like this and do like that, then this is going to happen. And as you are growing up, you added your own information. And you added your own ideas. And now you are afraid of everybody. If a cockroach is passing by, you are afraid. And if uh, there is a kind of a little uh, turning of the air with the doors, you're afraid. It's like they're there, they're there. And you've heard so much about demons, so much about evil spirits, so much about Satan. You have not heard enough about Jesus. But now things are turning around. Everything that brought fear in your life until this time, everything is cancelled in Jesus' name. And it says, Behold, I give unto you power. Can you imagine any of those apostles? Can you imagine any of those disciples being afraid of this power of darkness, that occultic man, and that other thing? that you are afraid of can you imagine a new testament believer going about being afraid of everything and everybody no because they had power you have power this morning i said you have power this morning it says behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions they will not walk over you anymore they will not crawl over your life anymore. In the day, in the night, you are an overcomer. You will tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Make it personal. Make it personal. And nothing shall by any means Hurt me. Do you believe that? You know, somebody said, since I got this job, some people are after me and they want to kill me. They cannot kill you. <laughs> Look at the foolishness of the man in the world. God, your father, made the tree and god your father made the tree to grow with the branches and the leaves and he goes to take what your father has made the branches and the leaves and he puts everything together and somebody asked him what are you going to do with that I'm going to kill a child of God with something that God has created. I laugh at him. I said I laugh at him. What do you do? How do you laugh at him? He cannot use what your father has made to kill you. That's not the purpose why God made that tree or the leaves. He has given you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy. And say that again. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. In Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 20. It says in verse 20, now, when is your blessing? Now unto him that is able, that ability is still the same. God has not changed. His power has not changed. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and all that we think according to the power that walketh well in your brain in your blood system in your body in your soul in your heart in your life in your family the power will walk in you today anything that is hot there will cool down anything that is dead will come alive according to the power that walketh in us did you see that word walketh walketh that means it's walking even now as i'm preaching it's walking even now as you're listening it's walking even now as you're believing god it's walking this power will keep on walking in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three. The ascending promise of his provision. You see the provision of the Lord. You can never exhaust the ocean or the sea of God's provision. It provides and so as you move in, when you first move in, the waters of the river reach your ankle. And you know, there is still more from where that came from. Then you move on, it reaches into your knees. And you know, there is still more from where that blessing came from. And you move on, and it reaches to your waist. And then you still know there is more. The depths the height, the length, and the breadth of the blessing of God is immeasurable. And so it keeps on ascending. And it goes on and on and on and on. And as much as you can take the salvation, as much as you can take this healing, as much as you can take this deliverance, as much as you can take, there is holiness, righteousness, sanctification. As much as you can take, there is a power, immersion in the Holy Ghost. And as you go on, moving on, in the ocean of God's provision, you are going to find out the water reaches your breast, and reaches your neck, and reaches you all over. And you are overwhelmed, totally submerged into the sea and the ocean of the blessing of God. Inexhaustible. It's waiting for you today. I said it's waiting for you today. It is inexhaustible. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 32. He said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Other than the word all, for us all. Salvation for us all. Sanctification for us all. Healing for us all. Deliverance for us all. Dominion for us all. Sanctification for us all, Holy Ghost power for us all, everything Jesus died to provide. 
on the cross of Calvary available then he says how shall he not was he also freely give us tell me can I hear you are you hearing me freely give us all things it will give you all things are yours today I said all things are yours today the peace of God yesterday purity yesterday power yesterday is provision yours today Psalm 81 I'm reading from verse 10 Psalm 81 verse 10 are you there now open your Bible open your Bible Psalm 81 verse 10 have you opened it tell me what you'll find there I was I will be what do you find there I am the great I am that I am he has not changed he never changes and the promise is still good today. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Tell me, tell me what you'll find there. Tell me what you see there. Shout it out. Don't let Satan muzzle your mouth. Don't let fear close your mouth. Open thy mouth wide, and I will feel it. That says, no matter wide your mouth is opened, the Lord is going to bless you this morning. And the Lord is going to make his blessing to overflow in your life this morning in Jesus' name. Open your mouth wide. Don't, you, don't be yawning say something tell him what you need tell him what you want him to do and the blessing is going to come in multiplied fold in your life today in jesus name second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 and he rose early in the morning and they rose, tell me, where are we now? Early in the morning, and it's still the same, and it went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. We have come out of the busy life in the city. And as they went for Joshua first Jude, and said, Hear me, O Judah, are ye inhabitants of Jerusalem? Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Your blessing is established. Salvation will be established. Sanctification will be established. Holy Ghost power will be established. Healing will be established. Deliverance will be established. Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be established. Believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper believe the declaration of his prophet and so shall ye prosper that time has come fear not the promise is still good fear not the promise is still good now you rise up and open your mouth wide and god says i will feel it open your mouth wide and I will feel it. And now coming into a serious moment of prayer. Nobody trying to say amen that well. That little child, a child or infant canal in the spiritual realm. I don't want any amen from anybody that is prolonged, that stands out. All of us were unity together. I don't want any clapping to stop. Any prayer we're praying, we're coming seriously. In the presence of God today, 
no rascals in the house of God. And nobody that is uh, behaving in a rascally manner in the house of God. We're coming before the Lord today. And we're going to have the heavens opened. And the blessings of God coming upon everyone. Now your time has come. Open your mouth now. Open your mouth now. You need salvation. Open your mouth wide. You need sanctification. Open your mouth wide. You need healing, open your mouth wide. You need deliverance, open your mouth wide. Tell him, tell him, tell him what you want him to do. All those fears that you have. All those palpitations of your heart coming unto you. All that timidity. The Lord is asking now, open your mouth wide. And I will feel it, whatever you want him to do for you. They are coming before the Lord this morning. Believe the Lord your God. Believe the promises of God. He'll establish those promises in your life. Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Tell him, tell him. Be victorious in your life. You have not been victorious over sin. You have not been victorious over temptation. In the private, you have not been victorious. In your personal life, tell the Lord, I want a sound conversion. Sound conversion that gives me the grace and the power to go and sin no more. Tell the Lord. He says, neither do I condemn you for the past. The grace of God is available. The goodness of God is available. The grace that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Open your mouth wide, it will forgive you. Open your mouth wide, it will turn your life around. Open your mouth wide, it will give you the power to live above sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The seed of God abides and remains in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Open your mouth wide. Righteousness will come with that salvation. A pure life will come with that salvation. Clean conscience, clear conscience will come with that salvation. The grace to live right and the grace to make right everything that is wrong in your life. The grace to restore. The grace to make restitution. The power to live and overcome in life. It will give unto you. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Salvation in your soul. Salvation in your spirit. Salvation in your heart. A kind of salvation that makes you live righteously. Godly. A kind of salvation that makes you to overcome the world. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. A kind of salvation that makes your life transparent. Makes your life good. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Salvation. It will save your soul. And give you the grace to live in newness of life. And it will be a life that is consecrated to God. A life that is yielded to the Lord. Tell him, tell him. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. You have anything to repent of? Repent. Those individuals clapping. You have been disobedient at the time of prayer. If you want your prayer to be answered, 
believe in the Lord your God and believe his prophet obey the word of God and so refreshing will come upon you tell the Lord open your mouth wide and I will feel it real salvation salvation that brings obedience salvation that brings submission to the word of God salvation that shows respect to the name of God in the house of God salvation that comes with righteousness salvation that comes with submission to the word of God open your mouth wide the power to live in newness of life he'll give unto you the salvation that the people had in Bible days the salvation that was noticeable a change a transformation a turning around in their lives tell the Lord that the kind of salvation he gives he has not changed the promise is still good stop the clapping and start the praying open your mouth he didn't say clap he said open your mouth he said tell me he said ask of God and he will give you he gives salvation he gives healing he gives deliverance tell the Lord a God is able able to do all that we ask you ask him for healing is able ask him for deliverance is able ask him for victory is able ask him for power he is able ask him for an anointing that breaks every yoke is able now unto him that is able able to do all that we ask from salvation righteousness to sanctification to holiness to purity of heart all that we ask the ticket to get to heaven blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God he is able able to do able to do able to do exceedingly above all that we ask tell him he has invited you to ask and he said he will do it that change will come that transformation will come that newness of life will come the power will come from within you just know that I could not do what I used to do I couldn't smoke like I used to smoke cannot drink the way I used to drink cannot maintain a defiling relationship with any man any woman like you used to do things are different now let him give you that power that brings the change in your life if you ask open your mouth wide you will feel it feel it with salvation feel it with grace feel it with power feel it with assurance and feel it with a new life the new life that makes you to live the life of a real child of God sober serious obedient submissive yielded to the words of the Lord ask him ask him his presence he says will go with you and if his presence is with you it'll crush every power it'll crush 
every personality that tries to walk against your life. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. The ball is in your court. The final result is in your hand. What you get depends on what you are asking. The salvation that sets us free from sin is our Savior. He stands at the door of your heart and is knocking. And if anyone hears his voice and opens the door, he will come in fellowship with him, give him new life, the life of heaven, the life of glory, a new life, a righteous life, he will give to you. As you are saved, and the spirit of God bears witness in your heart, you are saved. Move on, move on. The ocean of God's grace is deep. The ocean of the provision of God is so deep. If you're only saved, you are the shore. Move on. Until the water comes up and reaches your knees, your waist, and submerges you completely. He saves, he sanctifies, he purifies. He baptizes in the Holy Ghost. He endures us with power. Power from on high. The power that makes you to stand firmly, uncompromisingly. And the power that makes you to want to do right every time, no matter the challenge. They shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses, fearless witnesses. Persuasive witnesses. Steadfast witnesses. They shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Tell the Lord. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. What are those things the Lord wants you to correct? Make restitution about. Tell the Lord to give you the grace. You need clear conscience to remain in fellowship with God. You need clear conscience to remain in the service of the Lord, acceptable sacrifice. You need clear conscience to be on your way to heaven and get to heaven. You need grace. To make those wrong things right in your life. Ask him to give you the grace. He'll strengthen you. Energize you. Empower you. To do what's right. And to live. The way the scripture has outlined. That a believer ought to live.
O thou that answereth prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Retreat time is praying time. Praying for things that matter. Praying for things significant. Praying for things spiritual. If only in this life we have hope in Christ, will be of all men the most miserable. But if we have hope of heaven, hope of fellowship with him, that's the real hope. Tell the Lord, I don't want to remain as weak as I have been. I want to be strong spiritually. No question in my mind. No more wondering why this, why that. Walking as a pilgrim in the highway of holiness. Not looking back. Give me the strength. Give me the power. Give me the anointing that breaks every yoke and makes me confidently living a righteousness and holiness all the days of my life. Tell him the grace is available. That is the reason for the retreat. A new life. A higher life. A deeper life. A righteous life. A renewed life, a transformed life, the power to live courageously according to the word of God. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. You are sure you are saved? Move on. He wants to sanctify your heart, purify your heart, make you live honestly, transparently, according to the expectation of our holy God. Holiness in the family, faithfulness to your husband. Faithfulness to your wife, faithfulness to the word of God, tell the Lord, the power to have this change and transformation of life. His presence, living in his presence all the time. You'll not do what you will not want to see. You will not say what you will not want to hear because you are in his presence all the time. And he wants you to live without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of your life. That clapping is rebellious. Stop the clapping. Pray. Deliberate rebellion shows you are not born again. Deliberate rebellion shows you don't have the grace of God. Deliberate rebellion shows you are not living by the Spirit of God. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth wide and he says, I will feel it. Tell the Lord your promise of total salvation, full salvation, life eternal, life in abundance. I want to experience life of obedience. I want to experience. Tell the Lord and live the life 
the life of a true believer, not of a backslider. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Ascending promise of God's provision. You've got enough? No. You need more. Lord, give me more. Tell him. Let him dip you, immerse you in that ocean of God's provision. Let him perform the operation in your heart, operation in your soul, the operation in your body. Tell the Lord to fulfill all the promises he has made. He says, I'm God, and I change not. I am God, I change not. And the promises have not changed. The promises have not changed. It's able to soften your heart, able to subdue your heart, able to sanctify your heart able to turn you in the right direction tell the lord oh lord here i am i'm to serve you in holiness serve you in righteousness serve you with courage serve you with conviction He has commanded for you to open your mouth wide. And he has promised you will feel it. Be sure of your salvation before you stop. Be definite about your holiness experience before you stop. Let there be a divine heavenly witness of the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. So you are not just like an empty vessel going about without being filled, without being energized, without being empowered. So that we are not going about without being endued with power from on high. Tell the Lord. He has commanded you to open your mouth wide. Do it. To pray. Do it. To seek his face with all your heart. With all your soul. And with all your mind. Do it. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me. With all your heart. He wants to renew your life. Let him do it. He wants to revive your life. Let him do it. He wants to reinvigorate you. Re-energize you. Let him do it. So that you'll be able to live at a higher level, higher than you have ever experienced. Higher in conviction, higher in new life, higher in righteousness, higher in obedience to the word of God. Tell him. He will do it in your life. And remember clapping to stop the prayer doesn't work. Doing anything to stop the prayer time doesn't work. Rebellion will not stop God from working.
you'll be the loser. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. I want you to do everything you promised in my life. He will do it. If heaven is your goal, let him help you. Save you soundly. Forgive you and cleanse your life. And get you ready for heaven. Disobedience will not get you ready for heaven. Carnality will not get you ready for heaven. Habitual rebellion will not get you ready for heaven. Oh Lord, touch my heart. Let him touch your heart. Turn you around. Give you real Bible salvation. New Testament salvation. That will not continue in sin. He wants to give you salvation that results in obedience to the word of God. Salvation accompanied by righteousness. Salvation that is inviting and obedient to the word of God that helps you to make restitution. Salvation that makes you to go and sin no more. Tell him he'll do it. He'll change your life. He'll weaken the Adamic nature. Crucify the Adamic nature. Until he gets rid of that Adamic nature. Let him do it. Open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. You will not remain in the same level at the same level of spirituality. Wants to move, you to move on. Move on. Go higher. The Lord has answered our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. Fear not, the promise is still good. Lord, we pray every form of fear drive away in Jesus' name. Amen. Every promise you have given of salvation, Every promise you have given of righteous living. Every promise you have given of holiness and sanctification. Every promise you have given of the power of the Holy Ghost. Every promise you have given of healing and deliverance. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Do your work in every life. Perform the oppression in every heart touch everyone and let the abundance of the blessing of God 
come upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Every promise we have given, we have claimed. And we have opened our mouth and we have spoken to you about. Confirm it in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm waiting to watch to see that there's no clapping. All through this retreat, I want to let you know, if I preach the word of God, and all the ministers preach the word of God, and we don't obey, I'll come back exactly to that same word of God, and keep on saying the same thing, emphasizing the same thing, until you understand holiness righteousness obedience is the number one requirement in the house of god we're not going to turn the church over to rascals over to rebellious people that want to scatter everything that is good that the lord is doing if you have a neighbor you have a friend or is a rascal who just wants to prove that he's not here to hear the word of God or to obey the word of God. He wants to be rascally in the house of God. Talk to them. And if you are like that, if you don't want salvation, you don't want to go to heaven, we can release you to go back home. And those who want to serve the Lord, we're going to remain here. Am I right? And so this will be deep alive bible church you don't want to be part of that we'll release you you don't want to be part of that we'll release you we're going to have deep alive bible church from this time on in jesus name and remember if you resist the word of god i'll come back and repeat exactly that same thing you are resisting. If you don't want preaching, I'll give you a mini message. 20 minutes. And then you spend the rest of the time praying. If that's what you want. We're going to have a church that's obedient to leadership. And every member of the church, every worker of the church, you will be obedient. Why? Because that's the only way to heaven. I will take you to heaven. Thank God you'll be there. Amen. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. And thank you for not clapping. 